Hello board gamers, today I'm going to be doing a review for Yomi version 2. Okay, so what is Yomi? Uh, Yomi is a fighting game in card game for form, so kind of like your Street Fighter, your Guilty Gear, put into a card game. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get into Yomi, there's a couple different boxes you can get into, or expansion character decks. I won't be talking about uh, any product in particular in this review, but kind of Yomi, the Yomi game as a whole. Okay, so let's uh, jump right into it. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what each character deck contains. Uh, one of the things we'll have is a character card. This will show you how many combo points a character has, their hit points, which how you win in Yomi is by bringing a character, the opponent's hit points to zero or less, and then their innate ability. Every character is going to have different variations of those three things on the, their card. And then you'll also have a standard poker deck set up to go with each character. So you have ranks 2 through 10, plus jack, queen, king, then aces, and two jokers. So a 54 card deck that you'll actually use while playing. And each character's deck is going to be really different. So it gives every character is going to have their own kind of unique play style. So in Yomi, it's pretty straightforward to learn, but it's one of those hard to master games. Uh, we'll just run down through the different phases here. Uh, first thing you do is draw a phase. At the start of the game, you're just going to have a 7-card hand and you'll skip that phase, but every other time, you'll typically just draw one character. Some characters break that that mold, but for the most part, you'll draw one card. And then there's the combat phase. This is kind of the, the main phase of the game. In this phase, both players will select a card and place it face down. And then once both players have done that, you'll flip it. And the edge of the card that's facing the opponent, that's the option you played. So in this case, I played a block. And then most cards have two options on either side. You can see this side is the throw, if I play that facing that way. And then this side is the block, of course. And then some cards have special abilities on them, like this one does. The game follows a kind of rock, paper, scissors format with attacks beating throws, throws beating blocks and dodges, and blocks and dodges beating attacks. But there's a lot more to it than this. Don't just write it off because you think it's nothing but rock, paper, scissors. You'd be wrong. It's heavily weighted rock, paper, scissors. Some characters excel way more at one option than another option. For example, the character I showed you, Midori, he's a grappler, which means he has really fast solid throws. So more often than not, his throws will be faster than the opponent's throws. And since this is pretty impressive then, because the faster, if there's a tie in the game, like I say, we both played a throw, the faster one is going to win. So if Midori plays a throw, it's usually going to beat the opponent's throw plus their blocks and dodges. So it beats three of the four options here. So the opponent is going to be heavily incentivized to attack because Midori doesn't have that many fast attacks, which then in turn makes Midori want to block more. And then each character kind of breaks the mold in different ways. Uh, for example, Grave is probably a character that breaks the mold the least. He's kind of like the Ryu of Yomi. He's just kind of your standard all-around fighter. Doesn't super excel at any one thing, although he does have a pretty nasty super move. And his ace is quite versatile, but his throws aren't particularly fast, and his normal attacks aren't fast, but then he's got some good face cards and some good abilities, and then his really good aces. So he's kind of a, more of an all-around fighter, if you will. And then, so, once both players flip, o flip over their cards, you determine who won that given combat, and then different things could happen. If you won with a throw, oftentimes you could follow up and do more combos. So I showed you Midori had three combo points. Throws take up two of his combo points, so then you could follow up with something that only took one. More different different characters have a different amount of combo points, like Grave here has four. And so people could do interesting combos depending on on who they are. If you won with an attack, it's kind of the same deal. You could usually follow up with a combo depending on what kind of card it was. If you won with a block, if so if your your block beat a joker or an attack, you're gonna keep your card and then draw 
a new card, so that's a way to build up your hand. If you want with a dodge, so if your dodge beat an attack or joker, you get to follow up with a single attack or throw, so it's a way for those slower characters to be able to deal with fast attacks. And then there's also an additional part to the combat. Whoever won the combat, the losing player has the option to play a face down card if the opponent's going to be able to follow up for more damage. This face down card will either be a joker or a, anything else which would be a bluff. If it's a joker and the opponent uh, continued his combo, the opponent ignores all that combo damage and then gets to draw two cards. If it was a bluff and the opponent continued the combo, nothing happened. So it's just a way to an extra layer of mind games going on with that. Uh, there's a couple other little rules like knockdown, which will let you do mix up normals, and then there's a rule war where normal attacks, if they're blocked or win combat, they get to draw a card, but then some characters like Midori, who's a grappler, have defense mastery, which kind of breaks that rule saying normal attacks don't draw a card if they're blocked. Alright, so on to the next thing, you have the power up phase. In this phase, you could discard pairs, or three of a kind, or four of a kind, to get two, three, or four aces from your, wait, one, three, or four, <laughs> one, two, or three aces from your deck, respectively. I hope I didn't mess that up again. Uh, this is just a way to be able to lessen the chance of getting a bad hand, and some characters kind of revolve around their aces, so it's just a way to make sure that they, those characters can actually get the cards they need. And also there's an, a few, do a, a few combo normals so normals combo in ascending order so two three four five like that uh, depending on how long the straight is you'll get to search your deck for more aces there's rules on combo some cards are can't combo some are starters some are linkers some are enders and so there's a, a lot other a few other little rules I'm not going to get into but overall the game is really simple and that's kind of uh, the game in a nutshell Alright, so what do I think of this game? I played quite a few board card games, uh, played quite a few miniature games, and a couple of role-playing games. Yomi is my favorite game out of every category of game, not just board or card games. Out of everything, every gaming game I've ever played, Yomi is my favorite of all time. Uh, it's really interesting that it makes... Oh, there's so there's so much to learn. It took me a long time before I was able to even play second on an online tournament. There's so much to learn. I'm I'm still learning new stuff. I played over a thousand times. Maybe, I'm not sure if I hit two thousand yet, but definitely over a thousand. I'm still learning new stuff. It's amazing how much there's to learn because it's a lot of it is your. In addition to learning at matchups, you have to learn your opponent. Everyone has their own way of playing and as you're playing you have to try and figure them out. What are their tendencies? Do they have any patterns that you could notice and exploit? It's so one of my favorite things is noticing patterns and being able to exploit them. There's, uh, there's no there's no uh, greater feeling than thinking, is, okay he's gonna block this turn or I'm gonna throw him and, th and then you're right and uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good feeling. My, o my only negative of the game is it can be frustrating to lose, but that's probably more on me because I'm really into the game. So it hits me harder when I when I lose a game or I lose a set or I get knocked out of a tournament. But that, I would say that was more on me than the, the game. The, the component quality is really nice. The cards shuffle up nicely. They feel sturdy. They're good quality. Uh, a lot of times, games, if they have so-so quality cards, I'll sleeve them. But with Yomi, I don't have to... Uh, I don't know, worry about that. They got a nice bend to them, but still feel sturdy, so it just makes shuffling really nice and easy. What I find really interesting about the game, though, is in, a, in addition to getting uh, quite a brain workout and having to use a lot of thought processes, it doesn't lose its magic how, no matter how deep you get into it. What I mean by that is a lot of times you'll get into a game and you'll think this character is really cool or this spell or attack or whatever is awesome and you'll have all these thoughts about the game and then when you get into it you realize that all those thoughts you originally had were, were garbage that character was terrible that spell was one of the worst spells in the game uh, it's not so with with Yomi no matter how deep you get into it uh, your favorite character that you started with as long as you like like their style will still be your favorite character later in the game 
even simple things like Rook. He's the only character in the game that has 100 hit points, and I don't know. I just find that I still find that magical and captivating. And Midori has a really cool mix-up that I enjoy a lot. He has this his ultra or super throw, the Final Dragon Buster. It's a 0, 0.0 speed throw, which it's it's one of the fastest throws in the game. So he's when he has it and he's in dragon form, which he has to be to use it. He's either going to be dodging or playing the the final dragon buster and the opponent has to make the right call otherwise they're going to be taking a ton of damage unless they have the joker of course but I, I, things I don't know just like even little things still in this game I played it hundreds and hundreds of times it's still I still get a kick out of it Troc it's just fun smashing people with with the lovable uh, minotaur just a really great game it works well for casual people my wife is more of a casual gamer and she enjoys the game a lot. She has her favorite character that she pretty much only ever plays. Uh, so she, I don't know, I just, I've, I've showed it to people, they seem to enjoy it, even though, and most of them weren't even, weren't even card or board gamers, and they still enjoyed it. I play it more online, and I just have a blast playing it competitively and, and people that aren't so competitive. It just works. It also has other modes. Before you could just play it in a 1v1 form. Now they have rules for 2v2, so kind of a team versus team game. They also have rules for a 2v1 where two players take on kind of a just a character that has double the hit points and draws more cards. And then they even have a solo mode. I haven't, so it's a kind of a practice mode. I haven't played any of these other modes yet, but even if they didn't have them, it didn't matter to me because the 1v1 is my favorite thing of all time, our favorite game, if you will. Uh, I plan on doing a few more videos to go more in depth into the characters to see maybe if there's a certain set or just expansion character that would be good for you. I'll start the next video with covering the four characters that are in the round one box and then I'll go to the round two box and then as characters become available I'll probably do some videos for them as well. I hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.